Salute. Cheers. Prost. Morning coffee, y'all. Well, last day here in Illinois. Still getting to listen to the birds and the trees and the green grass and the rain. And all the stuff we don't get near as much of in Arizona. So it's such a blessing. Such a blessing to be here with great friends and great people. I working with the horses this week when you have good students um, again I say it again and again since I don't have as much time to film I'm busy teaching but that softness is key and getting that pliable flexibility not just pliable and flexible but getting it down to their feet and maybe that isn't just like us. I need to work more on flexibility all the time. But as the hiking and everything goes, I need to be flexible and move my feet and be able to travel. I did a clinic once in uh, New Hampshire. And it's back when my wife and I were I don't know, probably the first year of marriage or so. We still had two homes at the time, living in separate homes and back and forth. And we'd stay a few nights together. And She was doing nails and I was still starting colts. So I had a lineup of colts and had to pay someone to, you know, take care of them when I went out of town. Uh, and originally they had had eight people. Well like a lot of people they didn't feel the need to take deposits and it's like my mom said why are all your friends the ones that back out during bucks clinic well please put deposits in because that deposit it doesn't have a lot but it'll keep you pushing for that goal it's kind of like mm, having that drive you, you don't just buy a gym membership but having that trainer that you're accountable to to showing up day in day out will help push you to that goal having that deposit in will help to get you there but anyways it came close to the clinic and i called and they're like "Ooh, well yeah really we only have two deposits and the other people aren't gonna make it and obviously I can't afford to fly my wife and I out for two people for a clinic. That's not even hardly a clinic. That's not even a private lesson hardly. It's not even a group lesson. But, and we didn't have much money and it's like, we just can't afford to go. Christine was like, oh, are you sure? And she, she was doing a talk for a friend of mine who was dealing with some tr troubled teen girls. And my wife can share her story, but my wife's healing redemption through horses is incredible. Sometimes I think it's bigger than mine, and sometimes I still have the vision that it's gonna do more than my horsemanship ever does. But I kept telling her, I, I hate to tell you, it's bugging me, I hate to tell you, what the answer to my prayer is. And she's like, what's that? I said, I, I just keep hearing this overwhelming voice. You can't help people sitting on the couch. And it was summertime, so it was hot in Arizona. And yeah, when it's hot, you don't do quite as much. So you're sitting on the couch and kept praying. And, and so the teen group called and said, well, how much to fly just Christine out? Maybe we can afford it well. And, it was way too much for that last minute ticket just to fly her out. So they're like, we just, we can't afford that with our organization. And I said, well, back to that. You can't help people sitting on the couch. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll go with you. And I'll be your go for sort of deal. And I went and I don't know what happened in their talk. I heard it was a great talk. I heard it changed some lives and people did great. And I had a great time with her husband, Joe, and we went out to dinner, another friend of ours. And yeah, it was, it was a great night. 
But the next day they picked us up and one was a little, the, the teenager was a little standoffish. And I don't know, I deal, she's a jumper and sometimes, sorry jumpers, but sometimes you guys can be snooty against cowboys. And I was like, oh, Christine, your, your job is to like, keep me peaceful with that because I love everybody. But sometimes my frustration comes out. Usually it's the frustration of myself. And we were driving and my wife shared her story. And about horses and uh, yeah it's it's she was raped at gunpoint and uh, she was sharing her story and, and our Christian faith and it got deathly quiet and I tell you I swear to you I thought they were going to drop us off in the middle of the forest I even looked down at my phone and there was no cell service and I had a saddle and I'm like is this I've heard about just Christian haters is this them well then it turned out he shared his story and he's a Christian because he had had some drug problems when he was younger and that's how he came to faith And the next day, as, as we were setting up the sound system, he was sharing a story and how grateful he was at my wife's testimony and how far she's come. Because it... Oh, I guess I should step back. They were going to put us up in their guest room so we didn't have to have a hotel. But last minute he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay for you for a hotel room. And, and I had hoped to come back there for business and being a business venture and I'm like I can't I can't do that but thank you so I paid for my hotel and it was kind of nice because again my wife and I didn't have much money and while we had a great kind of few days off for our, kind of our honeymoon in Prescott we never really had gone anywhere for our honeymoon so we thought oh we'll take the half a day because it's just a couple people and we'll go to the beach not too far from there and hang out so but it was another huge expense and I mean we were in the hole now quite a bit of money for this clinic and everything and, and while we were setting that sound system up and he shared how peaceful how much he appreciated my wife's story um, he said I found out a couple weeks ago that my daughter's been abused by the man across the street and this overwhelming voice again said I told you you can't help people sitting on the couch and the horse they gave us for this demonstration was this kind of Tennessee walker and she was really just crabby and I oh yeah I forgot this part too I also uh, had a broken leg at the time so I couldn't ride as good so that was maybe a little bit of insecurity too about not wanting to do the clinic because I hadn't just taught from the ground much but I had my wife to help me and you'd go to get on this horse and she'd pee down her hind leg and squeal and try to kick you and bite you and so we did a lock and through the demonstration we picked up a couple more people which helped a little bit for the clinic and as the clinic went on, there was a gentleman there and he had shared about his faith and kind of a new Christian. One day we were sitting there, I was reading my Bible or he was reading his and we sat down and got to talking and he said, you know, my wife left me with my child. He had an infant not too long ago and I forgive her and all, but I just am having trouble forgiving myself. And again, this overwhelming voice came over me. Can't help people sitting on the couch. And we had a long talk about prayer and praying for himself too. You know, you have to guard yourself. 
because you know she has free will but your actions are what move you forward it's your personal decisions not your spouse's not your friends that you're accountable for but your reactions to theirs is still on you so you have to pray for yourself and my wife had rode his sister's horse and it's kind of a runaway and I mean it would just take off and they tried to hold it in and hold it in and it just get more charging more charging more charging and I had just Christine let it go and it was like tap rim tip back and yeah my wife loves to go fast and uh I just said let's let it go and it just galloped around there out of control and I said okay now start to circle it a little bit and I wanted her to circle it until it I didn't want it to trot but circle it till it had to collect itself up or fall down and then it kind of raid itself back and then I'd say okay open up and as soon as she gets straight off we'd go again and then we'd do it on the other end and then pretty soon it'd start to go and I'd have her do like an Olympic ring offsetting circles until she could let that go. And the horse would stay in that rhythm. And I said, okay, now just come across the middle and change directions at the lope. Don't let it draw it. And beautiful flying lead change. It's the first one she really did. She didn't know she was going to do it intentionally, but one of the smoothest ever. And the gentleman shared me, he said, yeah, my sister tried to control that horse. And you're the first guy that said not to sell that horse. She tried to control that horse. And she tried to control her son. And her son kind of went to a mall. The kind of mall you can't park your car at for three hours. And he stayed there for three days. And then he killed himself. And again, this overwhelming feeling comes in. You can't help people sitting on the couch. So, I don't mean to do that. It's a, it's, it's a good story all in all. Um, it really made me through experience later on pray about the clinics because I've done clinics for small people and I don't think I helped anybody really I didn't change but sometimes when we go out of our way maybe it helps us more than it helps them and maybe we have a better grasp on life for us and the same thing for the horses is we can give to them there's a lot there's a lot to offer for us and hopefully we can in turn share that back I try I try on here but you gotta get out you gotta stretch yourself challenge yourself but you gotta move your feet and once you're moving your feet keep going you're almost there don't forget, it, it's hard. The journey's hard, but enjoy the journey. Catch you on the next one.